Krishna, dear devotees, welcome back again to our ongoing series on the glories of our beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Goravani Pacharine, Divishesha Shunyavadi, Pastrita Deshatarine. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. So, as you know, we um, concluded our discussions on Yavat, and so we'll move on to our next destination in Braja. And in that mood, uh, Srila Prabhupada Saraswati has a very beautiful verse in his uh, Vrindavan Mamhim Amrita, uh, 1 2. He writes, I am not strong enough to go to the far shore of the great nectar ocean of Vrindavan's glories. Who can go there? However, because I love Vrindavan, I will now dip into that ocean. I pray that this endeavor may become successful and bring an auspicious result. And we feel the same way as we go on with our discussion today. <laughs> so uh, not far from Yavat, <clears throat> actually in walking distance, is Nandagram, where Krishna, as we know, spent much of his youth. Now, we spoke at length about Nandagram sometime last year uh, in our Vrindavan lecture series, but we only briefly touched on a very uh, special holy tirtha there, one of my favorites, actually, and that is the sacred lake of Pavana Sarovara. Pavana Sarovara. So today I would like to discuss Pavana Sarovara more in depth. But first, um, I think it would be good to give a brief summary of what we covered uh, about Pavana Sarovara last year and, and then move on, just to refresh our memories. We can begin <clears throat> with a very beautiful verse um, glorifying Pavana Sarovara by one of our favorites, Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. And it's from his book called Stavam Rita Lahari. It's um, verse number seven from the song entitled uh, Nandishvar Ashtakam. And he writes, May Nandishvar Hill, which has as its base a lake named Pavana, that purifies and liberates all it touches, with the purifying breeze from its shore, delight me. <laughs> so when Nanda Maharaj established his residence in Nandagram after leaving Gokula, because in Gokula so many demons were coming, Krishna, uh, Kamsa was sending a demon every day, as we know, to kill Krishna. So Nanda Baba decided to move um, everyone uh, more into Vrindavan proper, so they he established his residence at uh, Nandagram on top of the hill. And um, while doing so, he excavated a, a, a very large lake at the bottom of the hill, Nandishwara Hill. And that lake became famous as Nanda Sarovara. And he and his family, as well as many other Bajabasis, would bathe daily in the waters of that divine lake. Actually, I was reading that um, he and his family would bathe on one side of the lake, and King Bishabhanu, the father of Srimati Radharani and his family, would bathe on the other side of the lake. And um, during that bathing, very often, Radha and Krishna would um, swim underwater to the middle of the lake and have what the Acharyas call their underwater pastimes underwater in the middle of the lake where no one could see <laughs> Hare Krishna. So um, one day in Nandagram Palace, little Krishna saw Mother Yasoda making some uh, unusual types of prasadam. Not the usual that she would pre prepare for him to go into the forest with his friends, you know, like rice, dal, sabji, japatis. Just cooking something different. So Krishna asked her, Maya, what kind of funny things are you preparing today? 
So she replied, Lala, tomorrow your father is going on pilgrimage, so I'm making some fried things that will last for several days. Now in the scriptures I was reading, uh, it says that she was making little crackers, little crackers called maturi, maturi. Maturi is made of um, uh, fried dal and fried noodles. They become very crispy in the ghee. So Krishna said, Maya, and where is Father going? So Mother Yasoda replied, Lala, I'm busy cooking. Go and ask your father yourself. So Krishna went to find his father, and he asked him, Father, where are you going tomorrow? So Nanda Maharaj uh, smiled and he said, My dear son, I'm going to Prayag, Prayag, to take bath where the Ganga, the Jamuna, and the Saraswati join together. There's that famous Sangam. When we go to Kumbh Mela, when Kumbh Mela is there in Prayag, we bathe in that Sangam there. So Krishna said, Father, Vrindavan is all auspicious. There is no need to go anywhere else. And it's so true. <laughs> but Nanda Maharaj didn't take the words of his young child seriously. So he said, enough talk, enough talk now, my dear son. I have to attend to my royal duties. So the next morning, Nanda Maharaj, he got up early to take his daily bath in Nanda Sarovara. Before beginning his um, journey to Prayag. However, when he uh, arrived at Nanda Sarovar, at the bottom of the hill, he saw a very effulgent personality, a rather large personality, rolling in the dust of Vrindavan, who then got up and, with great awe and reverence, entered into Nanda Sarovara to bathe. So Nanda Maharaj, he'd never seen this distinguished personality in Nandagram. So he called out, Bho Maharaj, Bho Maharaj, who are you? So that effulgent personality, he replied, Dearest Nanda Maharaj, I am Prayagraj, Prayagraj, the king of all holy Tirthas. So Nanda Maharaj said, and why have you come here today, Maharaj? So Prayagraj replied, I have come here to bathe in Nanda Sarovra. Because all year long, people bathe in my waters, in Prayag, leaving their sinful reactions behind. So I have come here to roll in the dust of Braj and bathe in this sacred lake to become Pavana purified. So Nanda Maharaj was stunned, and even more so when he glanced at the other side of the lake and he saw many beautiful ladies bathing there. But they were not the, uh, the usual women who bathed daily in the lake. For these ladies were adorned in beautiful silk saris made of gold and silver threads. And they were wearing gold bangles, priceless earrings, along with um, necklaces, the Shastra describes. Their necklaces were shining like the sun. So Nanda Maharaj, he, he went around to that other side of the lake, and he approached these ladies, and um, very respectfully, he said, excuse, excuse me, ladies, who are you? Who are you? So one lady said, O oh, Maharaj, I am Ganga. Another said, Maharaj, I am Saraswati. Another said, Bho oh, Maharaj, I am Jumuna. Another said, I am Godavari, like that. And the rest of the ladies, they responded with names of various um, other holy rivers like uh, Kudu Jangala, Kaveri, Narmada, Brahmaputra, Mahananda, etc. So then Nanda Maharaj asked, and why have you all, all come here today? Why have you all come? 
So they replied, all year long, people bathe in our waters and leave us with their sins. So we have come here to roll in the dust of Braja and bathe in this lake to become pavana, to become pure. So then Nanda Maharaj, <laughs> after seeing and hearing all of this, with great reverence, he took his own bath in the lake. And afterwards, he went back up the hill to Nandagram. And by this time, um, Krishna was awake, young Krishna was awake. And seeing his father approaching, he came before him and he asked, Oh, oh father, when are you leaving for Prayag? So Nanda Maharaj said, Lala, I decided not to go. So Krishna was you know, a little smile on his face. He said, oh, and why not, father? So Nanda Maharaj replied, Lala, today all holy waters personified, all holy waters personified, came here to Vrindavan to take bath in Nanda Sarovra to become pavana purified. So why should I take the trouble to go anywhere else when they have come here to Braj to bathe? So from that day forth, Nanda Sarovra became known, it became famous as Pavana Sarovra. Pavana Sarovra. Hare Krishna. And you can just imagine how purifying it is to bathe there. And I've had the, the good fortune on several occasions to go and, and take bath in that auspicious lake. But it makes a lot more sense when you know all these transcendental leelas connected to Pavana Sarovra. So when um, pilgrims arrive at Nandagram, the rule, let us say the vidhi, the vidhi is that they first take bath in Pavana Sarovra before visiting Nandagram itself. And when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited Vrindavan, he also personally bathed in Pavana Sarovra. It was also, I was reading, one of Srila Sanatana Goswami's favorite places to stay in Dubajan. We know that Goswamis were actually wandering throughout Vrindavan because one of their assignments from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was to um, discover the lost places of uh, Krishna's pastimes, the Leela Stams. So they would go some distance and then we know they would stay, you know, the night under a tree. But in their wanderings, they became attached to certain places. Different Goswamis had different attachments to different places. So Sanatana Goswami was very attached to this um, uh, Pavana Sarovra. And on the southeastern side of Pavana Sarovra is a secluded forest in which the Brajabhasis at that time actually constructed a Bhajan Kutir for Sanatana Goswami. Actually, I'll tell the history of that Bhajan Kutir. It's, it's very interesting. Um, when Sanatana Goswami first came to Pavana Sarovra, his uh, presence went unnoticed by the locals because Vaishnavas are very humble. He, because he was, um, well, he was unnoticed because he, he was so absorbed in loving devotion to Krishna that he just stayed there and just did his bhajan without making any real effort to maintain himself. So it's written that um, out of concern for Sanatana Goswami, one day Krishna, one day Krishna appeared before him at Pavana Sarovra in the guise of a local coward boy <coughs> carrying a pot of milk. <coughs> and Krishna said, to him, uh, Baba, while tending my cows, I saw you here with nothing to eat, so I brought you some milk. Please drink it, and later I will come back for the pot. <clears throat> so Shastra says, <clears throat> the boy's speech and beauty enchanted the mind of Shanatana Goswami. And the bliss he felt as he drank the milk convinced him that the coward boy who had come to him and 
given him the milk was none other than the supreme personality of Godhead himself. So while thinking he had, act, he had acted improperly by not recognizing Krishna, a voice came from the sky and told him not to worry. It was okay. And then I read the same voice then directed the local villagers to begin uh, providing Srinathan Goswami with shelter. So within days, the, the villagers built him uh, a simple but suitable bhajan, kutir. And he would stay there whenever he was in that area of Nandagram because he was wandering throughout Braj. So whenever he was in that area of Nandagram, that, that's where he would stay. And when his uh, brother, Srila Rupa Goswami, stayed at nearby Terakadamba, they're not far from each other, um, they would regularly visit each other. Such nice history. Now presently, um, I have seen that near the Bhajan Kutir of Srinathan Goswami is the Samadhi Mandir of Akinchana Krishnadas Babaji, who was a very um, close friend and a very dear godbrother of Sridhar Prabhupada, known for his dedication to chanting Hare Krishna. I remember in the early 70s when we would come to Vrindavan, sometimes we would have the opportunity to associate with Akinchana Krishnadas Babaji, and he was just the personification of Kirtan. He was elderly, but he'd play that drum and he'd sing, and you know, he's famous amongst um, those of us in those days who had his association. I know many of you as well, because you can find his kirtans online. Akinchana Krishnadas Babaji. Prabhupada liked him very much. And um, at Pavana Sarovara, there's also a, uh, a deity called Pavana Bihari, the presiding deity of the lake, Hare Krishna. So 5,000 years ago, Pavana Sarovara was one of Krishna's favorite playgrounds, actually. The Acharyas say that uh, he could be found there almost every day. Such an important place. Krishna could be found at Pavanasvarova almost every day. Of course, it's not far from Nandagram, so. <laughs> and it's written that in the mornings, before leaving Nandagram, to go to places like you know, Govardhan or Kamyavan, Krishna and the cowherd boys would first water their cows at Pavanasvarova and then drink the refreshing water themselves, liquid nectar. And then in the afternoon, um, when Krishna would return, coming back to Nandagram, he'd first stop at Pavanasarovara to water the cows before returning them to the barns where they were milked uh, before resting at the night, in the night. I was reading that in Krishna's time, Pavanasarovara was a place where the Brajabhasis gathered on summer evenings this is the social life of the Brajabhasis. In the summertime, they would gather on, on, on the shores of Pavanasarovara to do three things. To relax and to share stories about Krishna. And then, interestingly, to relish the company of Nanda Maharaj. It's written like that. To relax, to share stories about Krishna and relish the company of Nanda Baba. And I read that during on these occasions, you know, the warm summer evenings are down by the lake. It's just so nice to imagine the Brajapathis like that. It makes it so real. So when they were having those little social gatherings, um, I read that Krishna would often make small talk with Radharani's husband, Abhimanyu, <laughs> who the Acharyas say only thought of ways to increase the size of his herd and was therefore oblivious to Krishna's escapades with Radha. That's all he ever thought about, making his herd larger. Because he was so absorbed in that, he just, he never, he was oblivious to, you know, Radha and Krishna's meetings. So sometimes Krishna would make small talk with him. Oh boy. So, and, and in the summer, Krishna, saying that he wanted to swim in Pavanasarovara, would ask to be excused from the, 
his friends, the Coward Boys, and um, escaped to Pavana Sarovara to enjoy secret pastimes with the gopis. So a lot goes on there. And also I read that um, any time Krishna was milking cows in Nandagram, or you could say Terakadamba, because that was also um, a place where the, the cows were kept. Any time Krishna was milking cows, Srimati Radharani, on the pretext of fetching water, she would come from either Varshana or Yava to a lakeside watchtower, a lakeside watchtower at Pavanasarovra. She'd climb up into that watchtower and she'd spy on her beloved from afar, milking the cows. Wow. Now, Maharaj Bishabanu originally constructed this um, lakeside watchtower, it was quite tall, on the uh, northern side of the lake. So that, you know, originally he built it so that Radharani and her friends would have a place to rest when visiting Pavanasarovara. Now, it's really interesting that that watchtower also served as a storage place for Sri Radha's um, cooking provisions, like ghee, different spices and pots, with which she would cook breakfast for Krishna in the summertime. Generally, she was cooking in Nandagram kitchen itself, but in the summertime, it appears she would cook breakfast for Krishna um, in a special kitchen next to that watchtower. So all the provisions were in the watchtower itself. Isn't this fascinating? And in those summer months, um, Krishna's breakfast would be cooked, served, and eaten on the banks of Pavana Sarovara. The Acharyas say, quote, it's interesting, the rustic atmosphere there added a sense of freedom to the breakfast. Wow. The rustic atmosphere there added a sense of freedom to the breakfast. It's written like that. So in these ways, <clears throat> Radha, Krishna, the gopis, the coward boys, they all relished pastimes at Pavanasarovara. So, uh, let's see, just a little ways from Pavanasarova is a smaller lake known as Leo Vatukunda. Leo Vatukunda. And this uh, lake is situated in, in one corner of a forest of banyan trees facing Nandagram. And there, each day, the cowherd boys would enjoy drinking buttermilk. This is a buttermilk pastime <laughs> in the forest of Leo Vata. <laughs> or rather in, in the, next to the kund of Leovata in that forest of banyan trees. This is what they did. This is where they would drink buttermilk under the shade of one of the prominent banyan trees. And it's described that Mother Yashoda would um, make butter by churning yogurt, and then she would feed her son and friends this, um, the leftover buttermilk. And it's described sweetened or salty, depending on the time of the year. You know, here in India, we have um, salted yogurt or salted um, buttermilk. When I first came to India, someone offered me this, this buttermilk, and you know, I'm, I was so used in the West to drinking sweet, and it was salty. So I said, oh, someone made a mistake. They put in salt instead of sugar. No maraj. <laughs> this is how we do. Certain time of the year, we drink sweet buttermilk. Another time of the year, we drink salty. So this was a, one nice pastime on, on the shores of um, Leovatakund. Um, <clears throat> a little further away is another lake. I mean, there's unlimited lakes in Vrindavan. So a little further away is another lake where the gopis um, would arrange uh, for Radha and Krishna to meet. And this uh, beautiful lake, there's, it's a, there's a very beautiful description about this lake. It's not so far from, um, from Nandagram. And this lake is called Sahasikund. Another nice name for someone, Sahasikund. It's also known as Sarasikund. 
So the name Sahasi derives its meaning uh, from the word determined. And the Acharyas say it reflects the mood of the young gopis in bringing Radha and Krishna together in a place so close to Krishna's home in Nandagram. Because <laughs> usually the pastimes would happen far from Varshana, far from, you know, the meeting of Radha and Krishna, far from Yava, far from Nandagram, far from um, their, their homes. But at this particular um, kund, Sahasi kund, the gopis were very determined and they arranged Radha and Krishna to meet so close to home, so close to Nandagram. So it's a very, very, very special place. <clears throat> And um, one day the gopis managed to bring Radharani to uh, Sahasikund, where Krishna was waiting for her. And the gopis, you know, they sat Radha and Krishna on a, on a beautiful decorated swing, and they were taking turns swinging them. And as often they would do, they were having kirtan, some kirtan. They were all, the gopis were loudly singing the, the glories of, of the divine couple. And just to show you how close this Sahasi Kund was to Nandagram, uh, on that occasion, Mother Yasoda, uh, who was in the kitchen at Nandagram, could hear the kirtan glorifying her son. Her son. And it, it's, it stated that as a result, she blissfully sang along. <laughs> she could hear the kirtan from a distance. And, she, and you know, glorifying her son. So in the kitchen, she starts blissfully singing along. That's how close that um, particular kund is to Nandagram. Now, on another occasion, Mother Yasoda went in search of Krishna and Balaram, who were, you know, somewhat late in coming home. And she found them, Krishna and Balaram, at this nearby Sahasi kund. But um, the boys were so absorbed in play with their friends that they didn't see Mother Yasoda arrive. And when they finally did see her, she called out to them, it's so beautiful, Oh my sons, you are the swans, saras of my life, one black and the other white. Oh my sons, you are the swans, the saras of my life, one black and one white. So overhearing Mother Yasoda, call Krishna and Balaram, her swans, all the coward boys present, they decided to call the lake Sarasikund, or the translation is Swan Lake, instead of Sahasikund, because in the beginning I was mentioning it has two names. So the coward boys, they said, oh, she's calling the, 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 the boys her swans, one black and one white. So we're going to rename this, this lake it's called Sarasikund, or Swan Lake. The original Swan Lake. I think there's a ballet. Isn't there a ballet? Famous ballet called Swan Lake. We're not so concerned about that. We would like to go to this Sarasikund, this Swan Lake. Very near by Nandagram, and not far from Pavanasarovara. And actually, both names have been used ever since. So if you go there and you're searching out, remembering this pastime, you can ask the locals. Sahasikund? Hmm, no. Ah, Sahasikund, ah, yes. <laughs> like that. Hare Krishna. <laughs> That's all I could find. I'm sure there's unlimited pastimes there, but when we become qualified, Srila Prabhupada will reveal all that to us, that we have faith. So we can finish today with a very beautiful prayer. Um, by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami from his um, Braja Vilash Shtava. Perfect way to end. He writes, On the pretext of going to fetch clear water, the lotus-eyed gopis again and again meet Lord Krishna with great happiness and love at Pavanasarovara Lake which is filled with many kadamba trees and the pleasant humming sound of swarms of bees. May that Pavanasarovra lake protect us all. Hare Krishna. Sri Raghunath Das Goswami. 
Thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> I'm sorry it's a little short, short but sweet, but um, that's the nectar, the Pavana Sarova, and I hope that has um, inspired you to come to Sri Vrindavan Dham and visit that transcendental abode. Again, we'll surely go there on our grand parikama when that comes about. So until then, we'll continue to wander through the 12 forests and share with you um, all the unlimited glories of that special place, the 12 forests of Vrindavan. So thank you. Keep well. Um, I'll be back in a couple of days. Shishi Gorani Tai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Vadashama Sundar Ki, Vrindavanishwari Shimati Radharani Ki, Vrindavan Dhamma Ki, Shishi Gorani Tai Ki, Mayapur Dhamma Ki, Gokul Vrindavan Ki, Golok Vrindavan Dhamma Ki, back home, back in Gandhi Ki, Go Premanandi, JJ Sisi Radhe. Shyam, Shri Prabhupada, Ki Jai, Arigol, <laughs> see you.